Anatina. Hi, Jeffrey. Thank you for all the uh, important information you work on finding for us. Um, question. Uh, what is the mechanism by which glyphosate affects humans and other living creatures? That's like, it's kind of like you set me up for that, Anatina. I'm sorry. It's like you set me up for that. It was like, I have the answer. I good, have it good. all. I, I actually have it in um, a PowerPoint. Um, let's see. Um, all right. So I'm going to share my share a PowerPoint here in just a second. Oh, I can't do it that way. Now I can't see you. <laughs> All right, I'll just tell you. So glyphosate, um, it was originally patented as a descaler of minerals in industrial boilers and pipes. Because one of the things that it does is it's a chelator. It grabs onto minerals. So it just grabbed onto the extra mineral buildup and pulled it off. And then when they spread the, the glyphosate that had done its job on the ground, it killed all the plants. So Monsanto bought the molecule and patented it as an herbicide. Now, because it deletes minerals, it means that when we take some, it makes certain minerals unavailable. And minerals are cofactors in the biochemical pathways in our body. So they're like the foreman that has to show up to start the workers to work. Otherwise, they just sit around on strike or they just wait. So you have all these biochemical pathways waiting for the manganese or waiting for the, the cobalt or whatever. And if they're, if they're not available, then it causes massive problems with many, many things. Um, and that's one, one of the things that glyphosate does. It also damages the microvilli along the gut and suppresses digestive enzymes. It's toxic to the mitochondria. My friend Zach Bush said he can look through a microscope and see the mitochondria get destroyed when he adds glyphosate to the cell. Glyph mitochondria is related to aging, energy, cancer, and overall health. So when you're destroying the mitochondria, a lot of things are, uh, get worse. It promotes birth defects. It's what's called a teratogen um, and also causes premature, tends to create premature um, births, lower birth weights and uh, higher uh, birth defects. It's an endocrine disruptor and particularly it damages the aromatase, which is what creates the balance between estrogen and testosterone. It disrupts the D the purification or detoxification in our bodies in a couple of ways. One, there's there's the detoxification enzymes in the in the liver. It's called the cytochrome P450 enzymes, and they get damaged, and so there's less detoxification that way. And there's also something called NRF2, um, which is reduced by about 30% in studies from friends of mine in Mara Labs, and that shows a um, that our cells, both in the liver and elsewhere, can't detox. And by the way, Mara Labs has broccoli, which also uh, can help guard against the reduction of the NRF2. And they also have found that intercellular communication, which is gap junctions, is reduced by glyphosate by about 50%, and their broccoli also protects against that. Glyphosate also causes oxidative stress and genotoxicity, which is linked to cancer. The gap junction damage is also linked to cancer. And so it's a called a class 2A carcinogen by the World Health Organization. It also infiltrate, infiltrates the brain and creates infl inflammation, which can lead to potentially Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative disorders. It blocks the shikimate pathway of gut bacteria, which, as I said earlier, produces the L-tryptophan and the tyrosine, which in turn produce the serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine. And it also um, is an antibiotic, which kills off the beneficial bacteria, but not the nasty stuff, and it creates leaky gut. And the, the antibacterial 
and the leaky gut and the mitochondrial issues, they can, you can just line up most diseases behind those um, because most diseases are related to one or more of those three things. So it's really nasty. Um, there's other theories about it um, in terms of glycine substitution. I'm not going to go into that. It's a little technical and not yet proven, but it's very, very dangerous for many things. And if you look at the percentage or the amount of glyphosate sprayed on soy and corn in the U.S., there's about 38 charts I have of different diseases that rise in parallel. All right, so your hand is still up, David, and your hand is still up, Anatina. And I'm going to first unmute Anatina in case you have a follow-up. There are uh, creatures that get affected by glyphosate. What was that? The other creatures that get affected by glyphosate. Yeah, there's we have a okay, everybody. Uh, we have a citation list on our website. Okay. There's all sorts of them. amphibian. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Actually, I have uh, Bin Wu. Finally, we get to hear from you. Okay, Thank Bin you Wu. Very much. Yeah, you agree the talk. Um, do we need to take the um, probiotic? to maintain the health. Okay, I will put you on mute and answer that. Do we need to take a probiotic in order to maintain health? It's interesting, you know, I'm not an expert, but I'll tell you what experts have told me. Uh, Kieran Krishnan has a probiotic. You can get it as a, as a consumer through Just Thrive. Uh, somewhere on our website, we have a discount. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have to find it. Um, and that helps create increased biodiversity. It helps promote the keystone strains that have a lot of different influence on the gut bacteria. And he's done dozens of clinical trials and peer-reviewed laboratory uh, work showing that his probiotics, spore-based probiotics, actually uh, protect against um, glyphosate and also help counteract certain diseases. Um, Zach Bush talks about just breathing in different territories. You breathe by the ocean, you breathe in the in the mountains and you bring and you bring in microbes. He's against taking specific probiotics that the whole purpose is to multiply those probiotics because he says it'll be like a monoculture. Although um, Kieran Krishnan's Just Thrive, it produces actually diversity. So it's doesn't quite work in that same model that Zach was talking about. There's also um, taking fermented vegetables, which have a huge variety. They also have prebiotics. A lot of the root vegetables have prebiotics, which feed the, the probiotics. So if you have a lot of variety of, of fermented vegetables, you'll get a lot of variety of the probiotics. And variety is one of, the, one of the most important aspects of a healthy gut microbiome. And it's one of the characteristics of the more early human beings who were frozen in some bog or, or, or permafrost. They have more and they have more diversity. And then um, uh, there's also uh, some of these probiotics that we talked about that are designed for reducing stress and all these things. Um, the ion biome that, that Zach Bush has is supposed to create an environment to foster more intercellular communication between the microbes and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of expert opinions and Ben, I'm just telling you what I hear. Um, and I, I've tried them all and I've interviewed each one of these formulators and scientists and doctors so that they can provide the evidence. So if you sign up for our, the, at the Institute for Responsible Technology at responsibletechnology.org, next time I do an interview, you'll be able to hear that directly. All right, so um, Steve, you haven't had a chance yet. Hi, um, thank you. I keep switching my hand on and off because I don't know. Um, after a, this seems to be a common thread. After a lifetime of the insults that, that, that you describe, what could you do? If you've had surgeries and you've been on long courses of antibiotics, maybe you were a premature delivery or, and you didn't 
or you weren't, or you were from an era before breastfeeding when breastfeeding was frowned upon and you didn't, and you weren't inoculated. A lot of these experts say that the microbiome is like real estate. You know, you, you have to get it while the getting is good. And all of this stuff of taking stuff now just doesn't, doesn't, except for kefir, but you know, that all the other stuff sort of supports the microbiome, but you're not really going to create the different, uh, you know, change the environment much, except for the fecal transplants, and those aren't really available to us. So, Jeffrey, what's a body to do? That's a good question, Steve. And you're a great, you're, you're, you really set it up very well. Uh, first of all, I think we all know of some of these people that are like 95 years old, and they're smoking, or they're just eating junk food, or they don't eat any vegetables, or the, the human body is amazing and the repair mechanisms are built in. So there's detox, rebuild, and repair. It's part of who we are. It's how we grow as a ba from a baby to an adult. And many of those mechanisms are there to repair. But it's not just in humans, you know, they took mice and they put, gave them genetically engineered uh, Roundup Ready crops for soybeans for eight months and they had damage to their testicles, pancreas, and and um, I think it was the heart and um, or liver. And when they put the next group on non-GMO soy for the next month, it started to reverse. Uh, when Kiran Krishnan took uh, fecal matter from a three-year-old from um, Sweden who had lived far away from the city, never taken antibiotics, never gotten vaccinated, always eaten organic food, so she was a unicorn, they, they took that fecal matter or gut bacteria and whatnot and put it into something called the Scheim model in, in Belgium, where it looks like it's basically a fake human gut. And they fed it food for some time, two or three weeks, and then they put in Roundup. And there was these dramatic changes. And the changes were, were like... Um, they were so bad that I went through these 28 different conditions that people reported getting better from when they switched to non-GMO and organic food. And I said to Kieran, would the changes in the gut bacteria that you saw explain any of these conditions? And we went through digestive problems, fatigue, obesity, brain fog, anxiety, depression, allergies, concentration and memory, joint pain seasonal allergies, gluten sensitivity, insomnia, eczema and skin conditions, hormonal problems, musculoskeletal pain, musculoskeletal pain, autoimmune disease, etc. And he said, yes, he, he explained the mechanism in each case, in this one interview, of how the changes in the gut bacteria could create those particular diseases or make them worse. But then he put in his spores and it started to reverse. He had to stop at a certain point before he would want to because there's only a limited amount of time you can use this model for and it breaks down. But actually, it was reversing. And we know from human clinical trials, he actually showed reversals of specific diseases from the probiotics. So it's not, you see, one thing, Steve, is we sometimes hear the doom and gloom, you can't make a change from conventional science and conventional medicine. Oh, once you have it in the, you know, as a child, it's stuck for life, or you'll never be able to get out of diabetes, you know, type two diabetes or whatever. When you look at, at some of the functional medicine, environmental medicine, integrative medicine, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, homeopathy, you look outside the realm of the traditional or non-traditional, the conventional chemical-based pharmaceutical method, then a lot of things turn out to be more flexible than we were told. So I can say that based on the research that I've looked at, and it's not my area, so I'm not exhaustive, but the ones that I have looked at, it is absolutely possible to rebuild, repair, uh, repopulate. And some of these folks have specific um, microbes just for those that have taken uh, long, long antibiotics. So there's good news there. And uh, I, I know that from my experience, um, when I talked to and like surveyed 
uh, people at 150 lectures, and I said, what did you get better from when you switched to a non-GMO organic diet? From the 3,256 people that filled out the same survey, most of those people did not do anything in addition to, at the time, switching to a better diet, and they got better from the diseases, and substantially better. So that's good news. <music>